Hi, welcome. In this video, we'll do problem 19. And problem 19 says the function f is defined by this. Got it. What points x, y on the graph of f have the property that the line tangent to f at x, y has slope 1 half? Wow, what a fancy and convoluted way to say, where is the derivative equal to 1 half? So let's just find the derivative and set it equal to a half. And you might be like, oh, you're being careless. It says x, y. Fine. If you could find out for what x the derivative is equal to 1 half, then you could take that x, plug it into here, which is replace those two x's with that value to find the corresponding y value, and you're done. So you shouldn't be overly concerned that it said x, y. Just get to x, and then you could find the y value by plugging in the x value. That will give you a slope of 1 half. Okay, so since we have that f of x is equal to um, x over x plus 2, I, and I don't want to do quotient rule, I could do product rule if I write this as x times x plus 2 to the negative 1. You could do quotient rule. You'll get to the same place I'm going to get to. f prime of x, I'm just a little lazier than you. Um, by the product rule is the derivative of that, which is 1, times this function, which is x plus 2 to the negative 1, plus this, which is x, times the derivative of this fella, which is negative 1 times x plus 2 to the negative 2. And I'm done. So I could simplify this, and this part is going to simplify to just 1 over x plus 2, and then plus, well it's not plus because this is x times a negative 1, so minus x divided by x plus 2, and uh, I know it's x plus 2 squared, so that's a negative 2, right? Okay, and I know that I have immediate need for common denominators, so I'm going to write a square here and just have x plus 2 there. That's to say that I multiplied the top and bottom of this by x plus 2, right? That's why I was able to put the square in the bottom and then put x plus 2 on the top. And by multiplying it by x plus 2 top and bottom, I'm multiplying it by 1, so I'm not changing anything. So I've got x plus 2 minus x. Some of you are probably going, oh, the quotient rule was much more efficient in getting you here, which is fine. I just wanted to get fancy. Can I get fancy for a day? Okay. And then over x plus 2, I actually also wanted to show off that you could do it with, you could avoid the quotient rule by doing that every single time. Um, okay, so this is going to equal um, 2 divided by x plus 2 squared. And again, we need to know where f prime of x, which would give us the slope of the tangent line, right? Um, and because we need the points x, y in the graph of f um, that have the property that the line tangent to uh, f at x, y at that place will have slope 1 half. So the slope of the tangent line is given by f prime. We just got to f prime. And we need the slope of the tangent line to equal a half. So then it's this, which is the slope of the tangent line everywhere for that function f. Um, and therefore, we need to set that slope of the tangent line everywhere, which is here, to equal 1 half to, to figure out not everywhere, but where exactly we'll have a slope of 1 half, because a slope of 1 half doesn't happen everywhere, right? Um, okay, cool. Maybe in one or two or a handful of places. Um, okay, depending on the function. Um, but uh, we'll find out how many here. Okay, so obviously my next step here to solve is to cross multiply. When I do that, I get 4 is equal to x plus 2 quantity squared. And so then I take the positive and negative square roots of both si uh, the left side and I get plus or minus 2 is equal to x plus 2. Got it. So then x will have to equal negative 2 plus or minus 2. That is, x is equal to negative 2 minus 2, or x is equal to negative 2 plus 2. So here it's 0, here it's negative 4. So x has two values, x equals negative 4 and x equals 0. And those two values, x values, where the slope of the tangent line is 1 half, are going to correspond to, or have corresponding y values that we'll find by plugging in those x values in there. So for x equals negative 4, I'm going to get that y is going to equal f of negative 4, and that's going to be negative 4 over negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. Therefore, 
2. So I have negative 4 comma 2 as one point. And then for 0, that should be easier plugging in. I'm going to get 0 comma 0 over 0 plus 2, which is 0 comma 0. So the two points are 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 2. And where is that? 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 2 is answer choice C. All right, hope that made sense. Take care.